Welcome down the allotment. It's just after that storm, Ophelia, and uh, just coming to see what's uh, happened after the storm last night. In a big change to uh, the allotment, I've basically um, put up some posts. They're six foot round pressure treated posts, and on them I put debris netting. And I saw one or two people have used this down the allotments. Underneath that, is chicken wire um, basically you can see it takes takes it to below six feet and the chicken wire supports supported um, supports the actual post st structure and you put the debris netting all along and the beauty of this has been that despite the storm of Ophelia um, there's been no storm damage really because the wind is able to go straight through at the bottom we've put um, the black sheet in um, the neighbour had already put some um, netting through as well, that sort of helps with things like carrots, root flies, to stop them. Um, slabs, I put some slabs up against the poles last night, knowing the storm was going to hit us. Um, as far as the beds go here, um, I've actually, we've just started working on the uh, square beds, basically they've been dug over um, that's had that's gypsum, the white material, and I've dug in some digging some comfrey. Comfrey is so tough that it'll even start rooting from tiny bits of chopped roots. So I have to keep chopping it, and that'll have a lot of trace minerals. The apples, as you can see on some of the trees, are still ripening. Some of them even not ripe yet. But don't forget, we're two weeks behind um, the gardens down south, so basically, the, a lot of them are still on the tree. The beetroot plot is doing well, and some of, them, some of them are a bit woody by now, and they can become home to wood lice, but still ripe and ready for the picking. I've also constructed the same debris netting with the posts and chicken wire going along this side of the plot, and the gap on the chicken wire I've used is around 50 millimetres, and of course you need to use your um, various tacks, the double sided tacks and also galvanised um, nails as well and also against somewhere someone else has a glass house there it gives a combination of privacy but also shelter to the plot not quite like a walled garden but in a way it does, it cuts down on wind um, and the birds and insects seem to have got used to it on the plot um, cleared the soft fruit here, things like tay berries, and I've trained some of the younger uh, branches, long ones, along on that. And I've had a look at the pruning guides. The gauge trees have been all treated, and there's three of them as you can see, and dug around. The kale here is still doing extremely well. We've got a little bit of a problem with white fly, and I sprayed it with some detergent underneath. Um, it seemed to work very well protected here by mini pops so I've read this somewhere else actually this one's much less infected um, than other ones that are out in the open these apples will be ready in about a week's time so basically they're still, believe it or not, when you do the twist test on apples if they don't come off in about three or four twists generally it means they're not um, totally ripe and I found this even by picking them and you can tell again the red discovery apples will be ready uh, these ones were actually, didn't actually get pollinated until much later than the Bramleys the Bramleys haven't kept fantastically this year but the longer I can keep the apples on the tree as long as they're not been attacked uh, by fungus and various scabs and uh, insects you know they're doing well okay. these Bolotis were the second lot I planted and are going to be left uh, because I'm basically just going to go for the beans rather than the young plants and these were a crop which I planted the seeds I put them into um, pots at home actually in my bathtub to get them going and they didn't come down until much later than the first lot but about I'd say about 80% 80, 80 of them have survived and done very well and thrived here uh, this is a Granny Smith apple uh, on a dwarf root stock and as you know a lot of my fruit is on dwarf root stock um, a different sort of taste, much, much crisper apple, I've tried one while I've been down here and basically it's quite a sharp tasting apple but it's done well 
as you can see the sun's just rising over the Trent Hills over there and this is the front of the plot again I've put up some six foot posts here pressure treated posts and chicken wire I've managed to find a way of extending the chicken wire by using an extra piece of chicken wire and bending it over itself as you can see at the top and the debris netting is allowing the wind through and even though we've had storm Ophelia this, uh, my, in my, to my next neighbours to the neighbours plot there the storm hasn't caused any damage at all to this particular plot but uh, beautiful sunrise there yeah there's a better shot there as the sun comes up over the uh, plots there there you go on the area where I've got the um, gooseberries this year I'm not going to make the mistakes I made last year basically I've dug all the way around each of the gooseberries quite deeply and dug out any suckers and really opened them up this year for the first time because early on two years ago had massive crops and made the mistake of leaving too much on them this year as you can see I've dug very deep very deep circles around them and dug out diff the different varieties of gooseberries here soft fruit grows extremely well on this very heavy clay soil so that's the gooseberry sorted for now and this is the purple sprouting broccoli planted this year be waiting for this uh, next year and it's already I don't know four four feet high in places again more apples here on dwarf rootstocks that aren't quite ready and some of them even though they've been attacked by various uh, pests such as bits of fungus it's only on the outside it's only um, superficial it's not actually into doesn't go to the cores of the apples so still ready for the right for the picking the herb garden has been tidied up so that's basically um, celery leaf stalk and I've got a couple of um, there's, there's some parsley there and also the rosemary and these, it, it, the more woody bits I can also prune out a bit as well and you've got some laurel there and lemon balm and mint and of course also I've got these lemon scented um, little little fir trees and uh, lots of mint oregano and basically it's going to be sorted out there's there's also um, self heal and and it's all basically being tidied up so as you can hear the birds singing up there in the trees there I think they're happy they are there he goes happy that the storm's over as well there's my lemon verbena as well still in its pot and some jasmine as well the small fig um, cuttings that I took have rooted very well and this some of them this one here has been put into a, into a I've used cut slabs um, to containerize it and it's now um, doing very well and here we have some sorrel and there's also yarrow as well apparently guinea pigs like a bit of that so and the lavender lavender as well so all in all things seem to be ticking over nicely with the herbs even this late in October raspberries are still ripening on this autumn fruiting variety I'm really amazed and it's fantastic to put them in your breakfast. The sun's just coming up behind me. I only popped down to see if there's any storm damage. And I'll keep you updated as to how things are getting on uh, later on in October down at the allotments. <laughs>